Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, The Adventure of the Rygate Squire. Meet the characters. Hello, English learners. I'm Sherlock Holmes, a detective from London. We have a puzzle to solve. Will you help me? Remember, every detail matters. Hello, I'm Dr. John Watson. I'm not just Sherlock Holmes' close friend, but I'm also the one writing and sharing our adventures with you. I'm Inspector Forrester, and it's my duty to uphold the law in Rygate. I work closely with the local community to ensure its safety. Colonel Hayter here. I served in Afghanistan, where I became good friends with Dr. Watson. I'm the trusted butler for Colonel Hayter, ensuring everything in his household is in order. Hello, I'm Mr. Acton. Rygate is my home, and I've known its residents for a long while. Greetings, I'm Mr. Cunningham. I've lived in Rygate for a long time, and people here know of my family. I'm Alec Cunningham. Our family is well respected in Rygate. It's time to start our story. Chapter 1 Telegram To Dr. John Watson, please come at once. Sherlock Holmes is sick. He needs you to help him return to England. From Mr. G. Lamont, hotel manager. Sent from Lyon, France. On 14th of April 1887, I got a message from Leon telling me that Sherlock Holmes was not well. This was after his big case in France that took two months. He had stopped a big criminal named Baron Maupertuis from doing bad things. News headline, Sherlock Holmes catches Baron Maupertuis after a long investigation. The detective found out the Baron's bad plans which could have caused big money problems. Holmes disguised himself and arrested the Baron after a long standoff. Many people from Europe are praising Holmes for his work. Holmes had worked very hard for weeks. When I reached his hotel the next day, he looked very tired and sad. Even though many people were praising him, he didn't seem happy. But when he saw me, he looked a bit better. He said, Watson, my dear friend, thank you for coming. He looked weak, but there was a familiar spark in his eyes. In a few days, we were back at our home in Baker Street. My old friend, Colonel Hayter, who I knew from Afghanistan, had asked me to visit him in a place called Rygate. He even said Holmes could join. I thought it would be good for both of us to get some rest in the countryside. At first, Holmes didn't want to go, but after I told him about how peaceful it would be at the colonel's house, he agreed. Are you enjoying this story? Let us know by tapping the like button. Thank you. A week later, we found ourselves in the peaceful countryside of Surrey. Hater, who was once a soldier, shared many stories with Holmes about their travels. One evening, we all sat in a room filled with weapons. Holmes looked at the guns and said, I might take a pistol to my room tonight. Just in case. In case of what? I asked. We had a burglary recently. A rich man, Mr. Acton, had his house entered, but they only took a few things, replied Hater. Holmes looked curious. Any clues? Hater shrugged. Nothing big. The thieves took a book, some candlesticks, a paperweight, a wooden barometer, and a ball of string. What a strange mix of things, I said. Holmes muttered, The local police should look into this. I quickly reminded him, Holmes, you're here to rest. Don't dive into another case. Holmes just smiled, clearly tempted by the mystery. The next morning, our quiet time was interrupted. The colonel's butler burst into the dining room. Did you hear about the Cunninghams? There's been a murder. Everyone was shocked. Who was it? Asked the colonel. It was William, the coachman. He was shot. The butler replied. Any idea who did it? It must be the burglar. He was trying to enter the house when William found him. 
The colonel nodded. We'll visit the Cunninghams later. This is sad. William was loyal to them. Holmes spoke up. This is interesting. Two crimes so close together. It seems unusual for this peaceful area. The colonel added, It must be someone local. Acton and Cunningham are the biggest houses here. They've been in a legal fight over property for years. It's cost them a lot. Holmes yawned. If it's someone from here, they'll be caught soon. Don't worry, Watson. I won't get involved. I wasn't convinced, especially when there was a knock on the door, signaling more news. Chapter 2 The butler came in with a young man. This is Inspector Forrester, he said. Forrester greeted everyone. Good morning, Colonel. I've heard Sherlock Holmes is here. Holmes smiled. Yes, I'm here. The inspector seemed hopeful. Mr. Holmes, we could use your help. Holmes laughed. Looks like no rest for us, Watson. Tell us more, Inspector. Forrester began. We didn't solve the Acton case. But this time, we saw the man. Don't miss a single chapter of our extraordinary stories. Hit the subscribe button now. After he shot William, the coachman, he ran away. Holmes was curious. Tell me everything. The inspector continued. Mr. Cunningham saw the man from his window. And so did his son, Alec. They both heard William shouting. When Alec went to check, he saw two men fighting. One of them shot William and ran away. I watched Holmes. He seemed focused, waiting for more. The inspector went on. Mr. Cunningham lost sight of the man quickly. All we know is that he wore dark clothes. We're trying to find out more. Holmes asked about William. Forrester explained. He lived with his old, deaf mother. We think he went to the main house to check things. The thief had broken in when William saw him. I was worried about William's mother when I realized Forrester was still speaking. We found this. He showed a small piece of paper. On it was written, at quarter to twelve. Learn what? Maybe. Forrester said, this might be a clue. Maybe William and the burglar had a plan, but then they fought? Holmes looked deeply at the paper. This is interesting, he mused. After a pause, he seemed to have a burst of energy. I want to investigate this. I'll go with the inspector to the police station. Watson, you stay here. I nodded, watching Holmes leave, full of energy as always. Chapter 3 After waiting quite a while, the inspector came back. He was alone. Holmes is in the field outside, the inspector explained. He wants us all to join him and then go to Mr. Cunningham's house together. Why so? Asked the colonel. The inspector looked a bit unsure. I'm not completely sure. But he's been acting a bit different today. Maybe it's because he's still recovering from his illness. I tried to ease their worries. Holmes often acts in strange ways when he's thinking. It's just how he is. We found Holmes outside. He was walking slowly, deep in thought. This case is very interesting, he said, looking happier. I've learned a lot this morning. I was glad to see him active and engaged, but I was also concerned. He still needed more rest. I began to question my decision to bring him to the countryside. You went to see where the crime happened? The colonel questioned. Yes. The inspector and I saw the place. We also spoke to Mr. Cunningham and his son. They provided some useful information. And did you figure anything out? Holmes nodded slowly. We confirmed some details. But there's an important clue. A piece of paper found with the dead man. It had the time of his death written on it. That is indeed crucial. The inspector chimed in. The person who wrote the note probably wanted to meet William at that time. 
Holmes added. If we could find the remaining part of that paper, it might tell us more. It's a big clue. The colonel looked puzzled. But how do we find that paper? We must think and look for clues, said Holmes. Another question is, how did William get that note? Was it delivered to him? The inspector quickly said. I found out that William received a letter yesterday afternoon. But the envelope was thrown away. Holmes smiled, clearly pleased. Well done, Inspector. It's always great working with someone who's sharp. Now, let's head to the lodge. I want to show everyone where the crime took place. As we walked, the group was filled with a sense of purpose and anticipation. It was clear that Holmes was onto something, and we were all eager to see what he had uncovered. Chapter 4 We walked towards a lovely house, passing a small cottage on the way. Soon, we reached a side gate. We entered, and a policeman greeted us. Ahead, there were stairs. Holmes explained, On these stairs, young Alex saw two men fighting right here. Alex's father watched from that window and saw the attacker run away from that bush. Both father and son are sure. Two men then approached. One was older and looked serious. The younger man, bright and stylish, seemed out of place given the sad reason for our visit. He said to Holmes, Still investigating? Not solved it yet. Holmes smiled. These things take time. Alec, the young man, looked amused. Seems like you don't have much to go on. Suddenly, Holmes looked ill and fell. I rushed to him. We need to get him inside. We helped Holmes into the kitchen. After resting, he sat up, looking a bit embarrassed. I've recently been ill and can sometimes feel weak. I agreed, hoping he'd soon feel better. Old Mr. Cunningham kindly offered, Would you like a ride home? Holmes, not wanting to leave so soon, replied, I have a question. Is it possible William arrived after the burglar entered? It seems odd that a burglar would break in while the house is still lit and people awake. Alec looked confused. If the burglar was inside, wouldn't things be messy? And missing? Holmes responded, This burglar seems different. Remember, he took odd things before, like string and a paperweight. Old Cunningham spoke, Mr. Holmes. We trust you. What should we do next? Holmes suggested offering a reward to help find the burglar. Fifty pounds should be enough. Mr. Cunningham agreed but noticed a mistake on the paper. It says the crime happened at quarter to one. It was quarter to twelve. Holmes looked a bit upset. I knew he didn't like making mistakes, especially since he was still recovering from his illness. The younger Cunningham laughed a bit, and his father corrected the paper. Print this soon, said Mr. Cunningham. It's a good plan. Holmes stored the paper. Now, let's check the house to ensure the burglar didn't take anything else. Chapter 5 The house, surrounded by tall trees, had an air of mystery. Birds tweeted softly unaware of the drama inside. Holmes started his investigation by examining the front door. Its wood was chipped, and there were distinct marks, telling of a forced entry. Someone used a sharp tool to break in, he whispered to me. Why don't you have bars on your windows? Holmes asked Mr. Cunningham, looking up at the grand windows. We've always felt safe here, Mr. Cunningham replied with a sigh. And you have a guard dog? Yes, but it's on the other side of the property. Holmes nodded. And your workers? What time do they sleep? Around 10, replied Mr. Cunningham, looking more tired by the minute. Holmes raised an eyebrow. And William, your driver, he went to bed at the same time? Yes, but he was awake on that night. He responded, his voice full of sadness. As we walked through the house, I could feel the history in its walls. The hallways were long, 
and the rugs muffled our footsteps. Holmes had a keen eye and missed no detail. Portraits of past Cunninghams gazed down at us, and the house seemed to whisper its secrets. Mr. Cunningham seemed irritated. Do you really think someone could sneak around without us hearing? His son added. Maybe you're not as good as they say. Holmes, calm as ever, wanted to see more rooms. We entered a bedroom. The sunlight poured in, casting shadows on the floor. On a table, a jug of water shimmered next to some bright oranges. Suddenly, Holmes made it all crash to the floor, water spilling everywhere. He pointed at me. Watson, you're clumsy. Before I could defend myself, Holmes vanished. I was confused. But then, a loud shout echoed. It was Holmes. We all ran towards the sound, finding the Cunninghams pinning him down in a room filled with old furniture and papers scattered everywhere. We need to arrest them. Holmes gasped as we helped him up. On what charge? Asked the puzzled inspector. They're responsible for William's death. The room went silent. The Cunningham's expressions revealed fear and guilt. Suddenly, the younger Cunningham moved swiftly, trying to retrieve something from his pocket. But Holmes, with his sharp reflexes, seized a gun from him. With a triumphant smile, Holmes showed us a crumpled piece of paper. This is our key clue. Eyes wide. The inspector asked, Where did you find it? Holmes smiled at me. Right under their noses. I'll explain everything later. Return home and I'll join you soon. The inspector and I need to handle this. And with that, he and the inspector took the Cunninghams for questioning, promising to share more details later. Chapter 6 I was excited to hear Holmes's thoughts on the case. Around one in the afternoon, he walked into the colonel's room with an older man named Mr. Acton. This was the man whose house had been robbed earlier. Holmes said, I wanted Mr. Acton here while I explain things. It's his house after all. The colonel replied warmly, Holmes, having you here has been wonderful. Your methods are amazing, and I don't know how you do it. Holmes smiled. I'll tell you everything. But first, I'd like a drink. I've had a tiring day. Did you have another one of your episodes? The colonel asked with concern. Holmes chuckled. I'll talk about that soon. First, let me explain my thinking. If anything is unclear, just ask. I sat, ready to listen. Holmes began. In detective work, you have to know what details matter and which don't. In this case, the piece of paper in the dead man's hand was key. Think about this. If Alec Cunningham's story is true and the robber ran away after the shooting, he couldn't have taken the paper from the dead man. So, it must have been Alec. Several workers were already there by then. Holmes continued. The police missed this because they didn't think someone like Alec could be involved. But I don't judge. I follow the evidence. He then showed us a piece of paper. I checked this paper closely. It's special. Look, isn't it strange? The colonel said. It looks odd. Holmes read. At quarter to twelve. Learn what? Maybe. He continued. This paper is written by two people, each writing different words. The words are into a strong, but quarter and twelve are weak. From this, we see learn and maybe are strong, while what is weak? The colonel exclaimed. I see it now. But why would two people write like this? Holmes explained. They didn't trust each other. The person writing at until was leading the plan. How can you be sure? Mr. Acton asked. Holmes showed the piece of paper. The person with stronger handwriting wrote his words first. The other man added his words later, squeezing them in. This shows the first man was the planner. Mr. Acton exclaimed. Brilliant. Holmes continued. Experts can often tell a person's age from their writing. Here, one hand looks young and strong, the other older but not weak. 
This tells us the two writers are a young man and an older one. More so, their writing looks related. It suggests a family connection. I'm certain the Cunninghams, both father and son, wrote this. Holmes went on. I also checked the crime scene. The man had been shot from about four yards away, not up close like Alex said. The place they claimed the stranger ran away from was beside a ditch. There were no footprints there. This means the Cunninghams were not telling the truth and there was no stranger. Mr. Acton listened carefully. Holmes added, Next, I tried to understand why the crime happened. I knew about your court case with the Cunninghams, Mr. Acton. I thought maybe they were looking for an important paper in your library. Mr. Acton agreed. Exactly. If they had found one special paper, which was safely with my lawyer, they could have won the case against us. Holmes said with a smile. The Cunninghams tried to make their search look like a simple burglary. They took what they could, but they really wanted the missing piece of the note. I believed Alec had taken it and maybe put it in his dressing gown pocket. That's why we went to the house. We met the Cunninghams by the kitchen. Holmes continued. I had to make sure they didn't remember the note or they'd destroy it. Just as the inspector was about to mention it, I faked a fall to distract them. The colonel laughed. So you weren't actually hurt? Holmes grinned. No, but I had to make it convincing. I looked at Holmes with surprise. You acted so well. Holmes said. Sometimes, a little acting helps. Once inside, I made a mess in Alec's room to distract them. I checked the dressing gown's pocket and found the note. But they realized what I was doing and tried to stop me. If you hadn't been there, they might have hurt me. I thought back to that moment. I remember you blaming me for the mess. But now I see why. Everything you do has a purpose. Holmes nodded. I always have a reason. After everything happened, I spoke to Cunningham about why they did it. The older man, seeing he had no escape, told me everything. But his son was very angry. He looked like he wanted to hurt someone. Holmes continued. It seems William had watched the Cunninghams on the night they tried to rob Acton's house. Later, he used this knowledge to demand money from them. But Alec didn't like threats. He used the stories of local thefts to plan how to remove William. They lured William out and attacked him. If they had the full note, maybe no one would have suspected them. I was curious about the note. What does it say? Holmes showed me two pieces of paper. It read... If you come to the East Gate at quarter to twelve, you'll learn something surprising. But don't tell anyone. Holmes said, This note was a trick to bring William there. I replied, This countryside trip has been good for us, especially you. Holmes smiled. Yes, I feel refreshed and ready to return to Baker Street tomorrow. I looked at Holmes, happy to see him so content. Our trip had indeed been beneficial. The end. Have you enjoyed this story? Like and subscribe to our channel now to unlock fresh tales and level up your English skills.